Hello, hello, welcome to season two, episode three. North South Village, though I do believe this one should more accurately be called the Hag Hunt. DM, would you like to take it away? Yeah, absolutely. This is our fifth session. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, had some stuff come up. But uh, yeah, the party ended at the village um, on the north side of the Stamen, having met with uh, some of the chieftains of the Stamen and decided to try and use a child as bait to kidnap or to uh, catch a hag. Um, there are a pair of night hag sisters called the Sisters um, who run around in these woods and have been terrorizing all of the settlements and families living in the woods north of the Stamen. So you can probably find a family in desperate need of some help who may or may not, may or may not still have children um, somewhere in the woods uh, north, northeast of where you're at now. I thought a family had come in from the forest or something, and that we were gonna send, we were gonna go back out with them. I don't remember this part. I, don't uh, I was not here. I can't speak to that. Can we get a map shared? Just sharing it again. You're gonna need to share it again whenever I get in, but I'll let you know when that is. Thank you. Okay, so the graveyard was east of us. You said northeast of the Stalman, there's families that have been struggling with uh, hag attacks? Yep. I'm sorry. Is the dragon map symbol where we are now? Or is that where the families are? Yeah, that's the, the symbol for the party. Um, so you guys want to, are you guys going to head out into the woods, try and make contact with the family? Um, are you going to ask around the village more? I can put you guys on that map if you want. I, I th think we should probably uh, talk about our plan at the village and then head out. Thank you. Like, okay. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, let, let's all gather together and talk about the plan and then head out really quick. Well, I'm all for disguising one of us. I'm going to be finding my voice here throughout this session. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple weeks. <laughs> Why, I can alter myself into any form and act whatever thou wish. Jack's gonna raise some eyebrows at that and then uh, say like, okay. <laughs> do, the, do the families who travel with wagons um, hand wagons, but not like uh, horse and cart. Perhaps it would be prudent to get a um, hand wagon that our child can ride in, uh, you know, and that way most of us can be part of the family as we're traveling out. I think some of us lack in the stealth department. Perhaps I could hide in the wagon. Nobody would see me there. Well, I think he's saying, like, not, like, full-on covered wagons, like, literally just, like, basically wheelbarrows or, like, tuk-tuks. 
stuff that stuff people that can pull, like a hand cart. Let me know when you want me to cast spells so I can transform. Let's see if we can get the location of the family that we can visit. Because if we know where we're no, headed, it's much more convincing than if they're just wandering, wandering around, around the forest, forest going, Hello out there! there. There's somewhere we can stay. We only want to ask you questions, we swear! I was going to take, like, the innocent child approach. I have a childlike voice. I've been waiting to cry out. Um, well, as you, you, think, I, I, you forget, though, you are a sewn together corpse, and that is off putting in and of itself. <laughs> I don't prefer the term corpse. I prefer recently. I'm sorry, upcycled dead, okay? I'll take all death certificates. I don't have a birth certificate. You know, if there's anybody listening to this and thought they wanted to help, they might be turning the other way. But on a more serious note, I was thinking, you know, the hall where all the kids live? There's that one cheeky kid with all the information. <laughs> Why don't we ask, like, the matron of that hall uh, if they can point us in the right direction? That or the leader of the town. Either one might get us a location we can use. I think we- I think we already left, didn't we? I thought the graveyard was something you found on the way to the village, not something- The graveyard was something we found on the way to the village. Yeah, not last session. Because that was where, like, I deciphered the thing, and there was, like, the mental thing, and there were the statues that weren't statues, and then we decided, you know what, let's not fuck with this. Went away. It's pretty accurate. First wise decision we've made. Such a lovely place. Probably the one and only smart decision will make this entire campaign. We should have savored it more. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. The fall into insanity is a fine one. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff knew that all too well. Uh, so can I head over to the matron of, uh, like, some lady in charge of the North Hall to ask about where we could... Oh, wait, I guess we have to decide. Did we already leave the town? No. And can I ask the matron of the North Hall? Can um, I talk to you about something in private? Away from the children. Are you talking about, like, the person who met you guys here and, like, told you, hey, you can stay at the North Hall? Um, Jeff, someone else in charge, though. <laughs> Alright, um... Let me look at the name real quick. Oh, the guy. I feel bad. Ugh. Boop, boop. It's okay. It's... I have it written down somewhere, I swear. We can have a whole conversation without names. Eight names. No, I did it. Um, so we're going to go with the conversation without names. No, Gate, Gate Man Gus is his name. Um, oh, Gate Man Gus. Yeah, Gate Man Gus. Um, he's the one who seems to sort of be in charge of, like, the town guard and this North Hall place. Um, Perfect. What's your question? Well, you see, we're hoping to trap the hags. We have pretty reliable information that they like to attack children when they're not beyond the walls. So we were hoping to disguise one of our party members as a child, um, visiting one of the families in the forest, and try to trap a hag. 
we were wondering if you could help point us in the direction of a family that might be willing to lend us an abode for this mission. Um, as you're talking, Game and Gus's eyebrows go up. Um, look, I can't say you'll find any shortage of families who, uh, are willing to help you out in anything to get rid of the hags, but I'm, I'm guessing you want more than just their house. Um, hmm. I'll ask around. I'll see if there's anybody who's, uh, in town, has family out in the woods. They can, uh, take you back home with them. Can't guarantee any real winners, though. I mean, the good thing here is that we're intending to do all the fighting um, and providing the, you know, child, because we don't want to actually put any children in danger. We totally agree with protecting them in the walls. Um, and I think that we can barter ourselves some food here, so all we really need is, yeah, try to keep them safe, try to keep, try to relieve this village of one of your hags. Just we'll be at the room. hall or wandering around town. Um, just let us know. When you find any information, we won't go far. Okay, uh, will do. Give me a couple hours. Thank you so much. And I'm going to head out and I'm going to let the rest of the group know. Uh, it's going to look for someone to help us out, guys. So we have a few more hours in town. Finish off any things you're working on. Uh, Madame Vostra doesn't really have anything, so she will just kind of make sure that she's clean and all of her uh, armor is uh, spotless. After uh, about an hour and a half, um, Gus comes back. So, um, I've asked around. Look, yes. not many folks... Um, who uh, are staying out in the woods come into the village anymore. It's dangerous to travel that far, especially at night. And they're pretty stubborn folks at this point, the ones that are left out there. Those who would rather die than uh, give in to having to say goodbye to their homes and their land. There is word of somebody who might um, be willing to work with you, mostly because she's not got much else to lose. Her name's Matilda. The old lady used to have quite a large family, but they were some of the first ones to start going when the hags showed up a long time ago. Now, it's just her, and she lives alone in a cottage out in the woods. She's so sad. We can give you directions to her uh, cottage if you want. It'd be nice to have somebody to check in on her, too. She may well be passed, and none of us would know it. We can definitely look in on her, give her any help around the house if she needs it as well. Um, directions would be well warranted. We have this map if you can help pin down the location for us. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to point to Lady Bostra because I think she has the map. Where's the map? Yeah. They gave us a map. The guy did. He came over to us. It's not like yeah. on. I thought we were all who hanging did, out. Who did he give the map to? Either, either Vosser or me have it. Would you like to see the map? Uh, yeah. Oh, this is a interesting map you guys have. Um... Should be somewhere around uh, here. Can I ask what's so interesting about the map? Never seen a map like this. All from the sky looking down and like that. And what does a normal map look like for you? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly just uh, directions to places. Ugh. Is there anything while you're looking at our map you could point out for us? A location of other major cities or 
key locations and help point us out while you're looking at it. it might help us out. It looks over the map. Oh, really? Um, it's got most of the names of places I know and a couple I've never heard of before. I know where Vlandi is, but the first time I've ever seen the names of any other towns. I'm not a traveler. That's fine. I just thought I'd do it after. Thank you so much for helping us find where the old lady Matilda lives. We'll check in on her. Of course. If you want, you can um, go stop by the Southern Hall. The cooks will probably have uh, some food they can give you uh, for yourselves and for uh, Matilda. Sounds like an excellent idea. Thank you so much. The Southern Hall? Do you mean the Chief's Hall? Yes. Sorry, misspoke. No, sorry. No problem. I just wanted to make sure we didn't get ourselves turned around in your lovely settlement. You guys have any other questions for the gatekeeper? Just I can't remember his name. Yeah. No, I can't think of anything at the moment. Anyone want to come with me to Chief's Hall to get supplies for Matilda and the group before we head out? Jack. Oh, and a hand cart. Oh, shoot, we forgot to ask Gus for a hand cart. Who wants to ask Gus for a hand cart? I believe Roy can do it. Do they have a metal rod? The Smith mine. I guess is it before house. Um, where are you gonna go first? Uh, Chief's Hall or the Smithy? The Chief's Hall. All right. In the Chief's Hall you can see people are uh, busy. Um there's a lot of activity in and out of the kitchens on one side, and you can see a few kids sweeping the floors of the hall, wiping down tabletops with wet rags, and otherwise being busy and keeping fires lit. Uh, can I go up to the chef who cut the meat for me? Um, sure. You see him actually uh, coming out of the kitchen, um, uh, walking quickly across the hall. Hello. We were told to come here to pick up some provisions for our trip, and some for Matilda. Oh, put it on my head. Um. Yeah. Uh. Here, boy. It's uh, Jeremy. Yeah, that's Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, these folks are going to see Matilda. Give them a care package and a couple of sweets for themselves along the way. I have to run. Um, and he actually uh, looks like he's going to go take a shit and is walking quickly outside to do so. The little boy named Jeremy Thank you. Um, has uh, what looks like hair that he cut himself. Um, it's a brown. And with a knife. It's a really bad job. Um, he says... Uh, uh, follow me, and eyes um, Madame Vostra uh, quite uh, with a little bit of fear um, and curiosity, and begins Good. walking to the kitchen. I'm gonna give the boy an encouraging nod. I'll follow him in. I will. I will greet I the couple with a curtsy, uh, seductively. <laughs> um, as the boy goes in, he lifts up his hands and says. I was sent here to give them food. I'm not here to take anything myself. Um, and you see that a couple of the uh, busy cooks and chefs um, who had uh, lifted a pretty angry eye at the kid go back to their work. He walks you up to um, what looks like a pantry and opens it. And uh, inside are loaves of bread and some cakes. Um, he grabs a few of each and hands them to you guys. And you can also notice that he's not that subtle in his attempts to stuff a few into his own pants. 
Do we have any bags of holding? I have one. Uh, Roy, I don't know. Master passes the food to Roy. Or Roy. Roy begrudgingly takes bread and stuffs it into the back. It only takes a couple of minutes for you guys to load up on, uh, on goods. Um, bread, most of it baked within the last day or two. A couple of cakes, um, and some, uh, uh, bags of um, chestnuts as well. The Is there perhaps pants. any dried meat around that we could take? Um, boys' eyes go up a little bit wider. Yeah, well, follow me. And he walks to, down to the other side of the kitchen, um, past some more people busy at work that give the two of you a curious glance as you go by. And he leads you into uh, the drying room, where there are long strips of different cuts of meat hanging up um, with a nice fire in the middle, keeping the room smoky. Ooh. The boy gestures to the meat and says, uh, I don't have a knife on me. Uh, I draw a knife. I can prepare it myself, or I can. You can do it. Uh, she offers the knife to him. I think you can do it better than me. Uh, she takes a couple of like two pounds of uh, dried meat. The piece you chose um, looks like it's venison. Smells like it too. Okay. I think this will do. I appreciate your guys' uh, charity. Or what? It's not your charity. Guys. We're helping out. Never mind. Okay. Um, do you need anything else? That was the boy asking. Uh, Madam Vasha looks to the party. Does anything, anybody else require anything? Where can we ask for a handcart? Borrowing of a handcart. Um, well, a lot of people have handcarts, but if you need one, uh, maybe Mick's? Mick might have one. Actually, Mick definitely has one. Or two. Is Mick the smithy? No, Mick's the general store owner. Oh, yeah. Just across from the Great Hall, the Chiefs Hall. Jack's just gonna wink at the boy as everyone else turns away. And then turn away and follow. Um, you guys notice that the boy, uh, as you guys go to leave the Chiefs Hall, you notice that the boy is uh, sneaks out of one of the doors as well. Uh, so you're making your way over to Mix General Store or the Smithy next? Uh, we'll just look at the map, because everyone makes more sense. Mix is closer. And it's on the way to the smithy, so might as well go to Mix first. Um, it being mid-morning, um, you see Mick and, uh, one other person moving about, uh, the property, uh, quite busily. As you approach, um, one of them stops and looks up and says, Hello, I heard there are strangers in town. Can, uh, can I help you with anything? Yes, we were looking to acquire a wagon. Handcart. Handcart. 
Mm. Um, well, look, come around here, and uh, I'll show you what I got. Maybe we can figure out what you what you mean. He um <clears throat> walks around to the back of the general store. And uh, as you follow him around, um, you notice that there are a few carts. Uh, some sitting down, they've got four wheels and uh, two handles that look like one person could just push or pull it. Um, there's another that has two wheels that's uh, leaning up against the wall. Looks like it's actually got a yoke that can go on your shoulders uh, so you can pull it. And um, another smaller one that is just a wheelbarrow. Madam Vostra looks around the party. Well, which would be which would be most ideal for you guys to pull with? Jack, Jack will go up to the the big one, the like the the carry carry one, and be like, "I like this bad boy." The two wheel one with the yoke. No, the yeah. four wheel one. The f the four wheel one, the big one that can either be pushed or pulled. I believe that one will suit our purposes best. Okay. Um. <clears throat> do you have anything for trade? No. I mean, how much gold do we have? That was one. Well, yeah. Are you willing to trade in gold? Sure. Uh, what kind of gold do you have? I'm gonna take a couple pieces out of my purse and be like, "This kind of gold," and show him, like, flicking one of the coins. Nick catches it, um, looks at it closely. No mint I've ever seen, but gold is gold. Uh, five will do it. I feel really bad. I'm going to give him six. Well, I'll give him five more in addition to the piece I flipped in. Be like, that should cover it. It's nice doing business with you. Oh. Pleasure's all mine. Good luck. And he turns around and goes uh, back inside of his shop. Okay, I guess so really we're going to have to decide is who's pushing the bad boy. I think, Lostra, you intended to hide. I think the rest of our party is more conspicuous so we can rotate the pushing. Roy, Jack, and myself. Jack, Jack doesn't mind taking that duty. What, what if we pose as guards for the girl? So my appearance is not so uh, jarring. I have a spare Perhaps. disguise kit if you want it. Pretty sure what Vasher is wearing is enough of a guard outfit. Just someone pretend to be the girl's parental figure, so it's not just this random child and a bunch of soldiers walking around. I mean, I guess I can. Fucking use it. Just been sitting there. We we want a request. What's your request? Um, Twee requests a metal rod with a copper end. What do you need that for, Twee? Just in case of a thunderstorm. And what will you use it for during a thunderstorm, perhaps?
He likes thunders. Benjamin. Wait, is we is also just gonna look in a long stare. Well, I think the blacksmith is gonna have what you need, especially since it's specific is enough as to need a copper cop. Um. Yeah. I can see if I can borrow or pay for some clothes more traditional to the village. And wear that while we're traveling, so that if the hags are watching, it seems like the child has an adult supervising them. And then Vostra right. can be the guard, and Jack and Roy can pull the wagon. Right? And I shall be kidnapped. Jack's gonna just like pull Tree aside for a second and be like, you want some Mary Shelley shit? <laughs> we is gonna look blank, empty minded <laughs> at, at Jack. <laughs> Jack's just like, ugh. And perhaps oh, some no. cute, I don't know what are those things called, go over girl hairs like this. I am. We is now not like breathing, just cold breath. Yeah, like a bonnet, maybe a large bonnet to cover Queen's head, <laughs> along with her cute little dress and the shawl to cover the rest of it. Uh, guys, yeah, I'm not, I guess. If you guys go back to Nick's general store, um, he can get you clothes, and he lets you know that. Uh, no charge to the kids' clothes. There's, they've got too many of them. All secondhand. Oh, well, it's tragic. Perfect. Um, Twee, do you know what size will fit uh, your shrinkage? To... And then also we need an adult dress as well, if that's possible, Nick. Twee regains consciousness and looks at Jack, then looks over and was like, how tragic that you have a surplus of these clothes. We will make sure we take good care of them. <laughs> and then goes blank. Not answering the question forgetfully. <laughs> oh. Anyway, one uh, address, something that will fit me for the trip as well. Nick. And, and I, I as well. Are no. you going to be a guard? Huh? Are you going to be a guard? Yes, yes but I'd like, like to have traditional coverings over my armor. A tunic, perhaps. I don't know what the customs are here. Fair enough. Um, Mick looks at, uh, at Jenny, um, but, and looks, you know, a little confident that he's got something in mind, but, uh, looks a little more puzzled when looking at Madame Vasha. Uh, just a moment, um, I may have the th something for both of you, or rather two separate things, one for each of you. But give me a moment. He turns around Take and just ears behind the door. And then comes back uh, with something in each arm. Um, in his left arm, he uh, holds out what appears to be a pretty simple dress for Jenny. Um, nothing fancy. Uh, wool dress, multiple layers, um, the kind of heavy-duty garment that you can wear year-round and that you've seen most of the women in the village wearing. Um, in his right arm is a, a long leather, what appears to be leather, cloak. Um, it's uh, heavily oiled, um, and appears to actually be a, an oil skin cloak. Essentially a ye oldy rain jacket. Um, and he hands it out to you, Madame Vostra, and says, I don't think I have anything that'll comfortably fit over, um, over all of that armor. Um, this is about the best I can think of. Could you find me dressed to fit without my armor on? Perhaps a evening gown and normal wear? He's gonna look up and be like, you would look fantastic in a tux, tux madam. Um, I... We don't have any, uh, gowns or tuxes. Um... Uh... Hmm. I suppose we could resize, uh, another dress like the one I got for Jenny. It'll take some time, though.
Uh, how much does do I have to pay uh, Mick? For the oil skin or the dress? Yes. yes. Um, uh, Mick sort of thinks for a moment. Uh, ten of the same gold coins your friend had. For both. Twee silently, oh, Twee silently caresses you, uh, Jack's and I, I tip him an additional two gold pieces. Caresses Jack's what? Silently and undeadly just reaches and rubs Jack's stubble. <laughs> while being totally nonverbal. I mean, Jack's not opposed to it. It just gives kind of Twee, twee kind of a glance of, like, not here. He goes <laughs> completely limp. <laughs> like, you are actually carrying now full heavy corpse. You have to, like, pass it off. Straight dead weight. <laughs> Anything else you want to get done in the village? I think we've got iron rod. I have, or some type of metal rod with copper on them. Yeah, we the have to pick stuff up from the smithy. Oh, right. Um, Jenny, uh, as you approach the smithy, um, you can hear the uh, sound of the bellows going, um, and you can see lots of uh, black smoke coming out of the chimney. Inside is, um, Kern, um, sorry, not Kern. Katrina, the daughter of Kern, uh, the blacksmith, um, busily getting the forge, uh, up and running to heat. And magic sword covers the rest of us. Hi, Katrina. It's us again. We have another interesting request for you and your father. Um, she looks up at you quickly, and then back down to work. Um, oh, uh, welcome. Um, perfectly good, good to talk to me, but, uh, my hands are a little busy at the moment, so, uh, might, uh, not have my full attention. Um, she continues to still go away at the bellows and to, uh, poke at the coals with a stick, um, as the fire grows hotter and hotter. What can I do for you? Easy enough, we're looking for a metal rod with some copper on one end. Any particular reason? Twee looks yeah. up and says, Something that may or may not attract lightning during a thunderstorm. Behind Twee, I'm just going to shrug my shoulders. Like, I don't know why we're here either. Katrina looks puzzled. Um... Don't know anything about lightning, but, uh, well, like, any piece of, uh, like, iron with a bit of copper at the end, would that work? Yeah, that's about it. Indubitably. Jack is literally, like, carrying Twee, like, hands in front right now, just as a limp body. Indeed. Still acting. <laughs> Katrina turns to the uh, forge for a couple of minutes and manages to get it up to heat um, and then turns around and says, Stay right there. I think I may be able to whip something up right away. She disappears around the corner and comes back with a long, thin piece of iron, about three or four feet long, um, about three and a half feet long, um, and then uh, goes off into another side of the smith and looks in a box and comes out with a small strip of copper. Um, she takes a hammer and uh, cold manages to um, wrap the copper around the end of the iron rod, um, which she then hands to you. Would this do? He looks up, like, falls to the ground and then picks herself up and then look, like, 
takes it gently and says, it'll do wonderfully. Thank you for your service. Katrina does a really good job of keeping herself composed, but she's definitely not in familiar territory looking down at Twee. Twee just tries to look as innocent as possible. What time is it now? It's probably like close to lunch. Maybe noonish. We could still get a half day's travel in. How far away is Matilda's house? Is it each each of the little diamonds is one day's travel or? Uh I think it would be two and a half a day's travel for each diamond. Yeah, it looks like it would take a day and a half anyway to get there, so it makes sense. Leave at noon. And then we'll get there the next day, kind of late. Uh, do, do we have a map other than the world map? Because I, I finally got on a while ago. I think you guys saw, but yeah. Now we reshare the... Uh... We're on the Stalman, kind of. Uh, we're getting ready to leave. Ah. Shut up. Is the uh, Smith still working on the rod? Oh no, she finished it. She made it on the spot. Well, is everyone ready to head out? I believe so. Oh, let me get changed real quick. Um, and I think Twee needs to shrink and get on her cute little bonnet, shawl, and dress. Twee looks up and says, my time has come, and asks Alt herself. Ja Jack's going to turn to the, the daughter of the smith and be like, keep me in mind, beautiful. She gives you a really puzzled look. Like she we begins the understand. transformation. Jack, you missed where the smith offered for his daughter to be married out to save the bloodline? Well, I wasn't there! How could I? Well, I'm filling you in now. <laughs> Here's your chance, Jeff, before this giant transformation into a child. Jack, are you ready to settle down? I mean, settling down is, uh, one thing. Oh, stop. We've got places to go. <laughs> Settling down for a night is another. Madame Vostra begins to walk out to head uh, to um, Matilda's. Madame walks past me and I'm still looking like I'm loading on the spell, like loading, buffering. And then I poof into a tiny boy. And then I kind of like run and skip out. Rest is like one of the little boys in the village. Yes, we'll just say that. I look uncannily familiar to the boys. Jack's gonna just, like, sweep and button his coat and then walk out. I'm gonna use the hall, like, a, a spare space in the hall to change really quick, and then I'll, I'll gather up my stuff and follow the group out so we can leave. I'll put my raincoat on as I'm walking out of town. Just have the tip of my sword uh, sticking out so I can reach it. The handle. Hmm. Alright, um, as you guys are walking through the forest, you notice it go from dark, thick forest to eerie forest. Trees um, seem to be have lost their color. Some are gray even though they still have leaves. The leaves are dark, dark green. Too dark to look like they really do well as you know, photosynthesizing leaves. Um, there's also the occasional uh, 
shadow which seems to follow you a little bit out of the corner of your eye, but every time you look at it dead on, it's just a normal shadow. Uh, I, I, I would say Jack's just going to be on high alert. Like... Uh, the rest of the day goes smoothly. Um, no issues. You're able to follow more or less a trail through the woods, though it's not perfect. Um, the lack of traffic on these trails uh, in recent years means that a lot of them end up getting overgrown in places and you have to look for the other end. But you are able to make it with normal speed um, through the woods. The sun is uh, threatening to go down. Um, looks like you've got... Mm, Maybe another hour, hour and a half of sunlight before you get to that point where you've got like 20 minutes before you need torches and fire to see. I think it's time for us to make camp. We must make sure Timothy is well stowed away. It's so cold and dark in these woods. Mother. Hold me. Oh, little Timothy. Do not worry. We will strap you up to a good tree and you'll be fine under its shade. May I have some bread? Of course. May I have some more? <laughs> Let's get a tent set up, and you stay where you are in the cart, so you can be safe. Give me survival checks. Uh, I was trying to guard the area while helping. You still haven't fixed the pluses. We gotta figure that out. Yeah. I had a plus two. I had plus plus one. four. A tweet? Plus um, zero, plus zero for tweet and Roy. Yeah, tweet, you, uh, one of the best roles. Um, Jack, what was your bonus? Plus one, so 14 as well. And then tweet, uh, what's your bonus? Tui and Roy both have a, a zero. Zero. Um, Jack and Tui, give me a performance check as well. That I also have a plus seven too, so yeah. Tui also has a plus seven. And I'm an actor. A plus seven? Yeah. Damn, and Twee, what was yours? I am an actor as my, uh... Backstory. Ah, so what's your... No, my feet. Yours, a plus seven as well? No. Oh. Oh, oh, darn. Still, no, plus seven. Plus seven. Yeah, plus okay, seven. you... The two of you managed to pull off, um, the camp itself isn't that well set up, but it, you, do, you did manage to pull off, like, this really cute, um, father-child outdoorsy moment, um, bit of a Kodak moment, uh, sort of performance there. Um, though, to be honest, hopefully it doesn't rain, because you guys didn't do that awesome a job on the tent, though it is up. Don't say that. Uh, who says we didn't want it to rain? Hey, young Timothy, time to go in the tent. Madam Basha, oh. I'm sure you will keep us safe. Ooh, so, mud never harmed anybody. Did you take the second shift? <laughs> I have been walking all day. I believe, uh... I suppose we all have. I can take the first shift. I think I've done the less strenuous of the exercises today. Yes, and I'll take the second shift. The boys have been working hard. T 
Timothy stay in the tent. No wandering out, no matter what. Roy, keep a good eye on him. Will do, will do. Timothy looks up with big Joe eyes and said, I'm scared. We'll keep you safe, darling. I promise. All right. Well, that night, while you all sleep, um, you all have unsettling dreams. Um, they initially appear uh, to start like their normal dreams, but you have a figure in the background of every scene in your dream that keeps getting closer and closer and closer, but never actually reveals itself. You can never make out details, just that there's a dark figure looking at you while you're dreaming. You wake up without issue, though, the next day. Um, party is fully rested. And... I want to give that to you guys. Boom. Long rest. All right. Um, Timothy stays in the wagon, everyone. Sorry. Yeah, that was not imagining. No, during the day. It might smell like a little, a little a stank in the cabin, so be be wary. Does Timothy need a bucket? <laughs> Keep the cabin and the wagon clean. Queen needs more of a grave. Dude, your computer's giving us so much heat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, so you guys go ahead and hit the road? After a quick breakfast, yeah. I mean, ha yeah. have we have we come across any, um, any, like, farms with families yet? Or are they still deeper in? Um, they're still deeper in. Okay. You do, you have come across, um, like, old trailheads where the trail is split. Um, so those could potentially have led to other settlements, but they're all unused uh, old trails. Okay. Um, you guys travel, and you uh, no issues as you travel through the woods. Um, same stuff as before, uh, and you notice that at one point it seems to become quite bad, like... All of the shadows seem to be moving out of the corners of your eyes. There's an unsettling presence and the feeling as if you're being watched. But as you continue down the trail, it seems to abate as if you're getting farther and farther away from the source of whatever that was. Um, towards, the well, the day, oh, uh, towards the end of that day, um, you uh, notice that um, you see a little sign um, that points up uh, up the road uh, with a few runes on it, um, pointing up a path that uh, breaks off from the main trail. Roy, well, can you make out what those runes say? PM, what do they say? Matilda's. Sorry, could you repeat that? Matilda's. <laughs> This Matilda's. The place we're looking for? Perfect. I knew we were headed in the right direction. We're almost there, everyone. Or we are here? You guys are there. Yeah. It's yeah, we're here. The, this, long, this is Matilda's. That's from the label. And... So, uh, yeah, let's walk up the driveway. I'm dropping you guys on the map now. On the road again. I am here. I am going to make food. Hmm. 
made a slight mistake when setting up this map. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, up the trail, which winds just a little bit, um, in the trees, in a not quite a clearing, um, there's a small cottage uh, with a single window facing you and a door. Inside, through the light, uh, through the window, you can see the light of a fire and a couple of lamps going. I'm going to say this now. I swear to whatever gods are listening, do not throw a, ro a rock through that window. Don't ask me why. Just saying. Bad luck. Um, how do you guys want to proceed? <laughs> um... Who would like to take the lead? Just an old lady living alone in the woods. Come on. Yeah, I'm not buying that one, Chief. When an old lady living alone in the woods is populated by hags, so there's a very good chance that she Boston. is Yeah. Yes. Will you accompany me while we go introduce out, out ourselves? Of, of course, of do character. we have the care package they gave us? Out of character as a side note, and yes, we do. It's in Roy's uh, bag of holding, I believe. Side note is D and D. I mean, I I think any old person you should just be slightly very cautious of, because like a they live that long, so you just really don't know. I too do not trust old people. No, we haven't done something fucked up if you've lived that long. Anyway, I'll grab Roy, can you pass me the care package? Can I just take a, uh, can I check for deception? And, uh, I will give the care package. Um, deception I'd like to what? try to see if there's any, um, magic uh, saying she's stuff. Matilda? Well, you guys haven't, like, talked to her yet. You just can see that there's some lights on in the window. Oh, never mind. Before we walk up, can I when see she does, any, like illusions? Absolutely. Or any magical influences? Yeah, do you have um, any abilities that let you detect magic? If not, I'm just going to say Arcana check. You said my. Um, I don't have any specific abilities like that, but magic is like my forte. And, um, yeah, I was going to say Arcana check too. Yeah, go ahead and give me an Arcana check. Plus six. Boom. Um, yeah, you don't detect any, um, uh, like any trap spells or anything like that. Um, but you do detect a magical presence. Like, there is something magical here. Um, but it doesn't appear, like, it's not a spell that you're aware of. Is it emanating from the cabin or from the forest around, or...? Give me another Arcana check. Definitely, definitely from the forest. Nothing seems to be coming from the cabin. I'm gonna whisper to Madame Bosca. There's magic around us. Some presence. But I don't sense anything in the cabin. And then I'm going to walk up um, and knock on the door gently. Matilda, 
Are you in there? We came from the village to check in. Uh, you hear um, the scrape of some chair legs, and then some soft footsteps, and uh, an old lady opens the door. Um, her hair is uh, hidden underneath um, a hairband, uh, or not like a... I, I don't know clothing item names. She's got her hair covered. And bonnet. Tied down. She's bonnet, there we go. Little old lady with a bonnet. Um, and uh, she looks up at you with watery gray eyes. Starsh. I've never met you before. Are you new? Hello, my name is Madame Vastra. Yes, we are very new to this world. And my son's traveled with us. Is there any way we can take him inside? I've heard the forest is quite dangerous for children at night. You have a child with you? Why did you bring a child here? I couldn't bear to be separated with him. But he, my husband is strong. He will protect us. I just couldn't bear to be without him. Um, the old lady's face goes from, um, that of shock to, uh, pretty stern, actually. She says, You're safer, you and your baby are safer in the woods than you are in my house. That cannot possibly be true. There's four walls around you to keep us safe. <laughs> to keep me woods, safe. But it won't keep you safe. Didn't keep my family safe. The hags, just they know who I night. am. We've brought a care package and everything. We'll return to the town. Why are right you off. here? Nobody goes into the woods with their child for no reason. Very perceptive. That's it. No wonder she's so not. It wasn't my fault. If we could just discuss it inside. <laughs> She now looks a bit suspicious, um, and, uh, looks over your shoulder. Um, the rest of the party, are you currently, are your tokens where you actually are? Oh, I don't have the map. You never the shared the map, oh, I don't think. But, oh, damn. Um. Boom. Oh. Is that... Did you unlock the tokens? There we go. Um, yeah, the old lady, uh, looks over your shoulders, suspicious now, and asks, What is this? Who are you? We, uh... Timothy. Timothy is gonna walk up a bit, like begrudgingly, kind of like soft, like not softly. Um, I'll say, kind of shakingly. Can we please have some shelter for the night, Miss? I promise I won't be any trouble. Would you like a deception or a performance? We can you describe your appearance right now? Timothy's like a soft brown auburn hair child with um not pale per se skin. Uh he's has like a tiny little uh uh warm flannel with a vest sort of situation. And some like uh his eyes are also um green. Big and green. Doe-eyed. Um, the old lady looks down at you, her lips, uh, pier pierced for- pursed, um, and then says, You can come in, but you're gonna explain yourselves fully. I don't believe that you're just some lost family in the woods. <laughs> Even a family has a giant scaled woman bodyguard <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> i'm gonna hand her the gift basket and use that as a way to get in the door <laughs> he's gonna like shed a silent tear 
She takes the gift packet and steps inside. There's not much room. A few chairs. I sat on the rug and Is there a window? I'd like to uh, kind of make sure we're looking around us. Yes. There's a window there. 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 Timothy is going to make his way toward the fireplace. Adam Vostra, do you think you could explain a little bit? And I'll keep a guard out. Am I standing by a window or is that over here? Uh, can you guys see all Mentilda, the green would you like to have a seat? Where would you like to Got it, got it. Um, yeah, Matilda sits in, uh, one That's of the clump, comfier red chairs, but she turns it around so she can look at you, Madame Vostra. Jack- <clears throat> Jack's gonna kind of lean up against the corner right here. Matilda looks around at you all, um, clearly uneasy, uh, and, uh, her eyes are going back and forth between all of you. I moved to sit in the chair uh, next to her. She Timothy is going to look up at the old woman, kind of scared, with big, silvery, wet eyes. Right. Apologies. Well, we are not a normal party, as you've already perceived. She grunts. Timothy? Yeah. Pretending. What? <laughs> I'm going to change really quick while they're uh, discussing all this. Our goal is to attract a hag. We intend to fight it. Uh, she looks over at Timothy. So that's not really a child? No, no. she's not a child. Mm. Would you prefer if I stay in this form as to not startle your old self? Um, doesn't really bother me. Well, uh... I hate to break it to you, but you came in the wrong place when it comes to your, well, your plan isn't going to work. No way the hags aren't going to see that this isn't really a child, and that this isn't, well, an ambush. What do you know about the sisters? They ran away. They ran away? How do we know you're not they one of the sisters? You're one of the sisters. How do you know I'm not one of the sisters? She smiles. Can we like read into her a bit mentally? Um. Yeah. Give me an insight check. Can I check for any signs of deception? Yeah. Go ahead. Give me a um. Insight check as well. I have a plus four. Um, Tweet, you don't see any dishonesty in her. You see a sad, tired woman, uh, older woman, um, who is oddly healthy for her age and condition. But that's like the weirdest thing that you noticed. Other than that, she's been honest. As far as you can tell. Can I argue for, uh, investigation? Yeah. Go ahead and give the investigation. It's a plus one. Um, it's definitely odd that this woman is as healthy as she is out here, um, but you don't see any untoward explanations for that. You just don't see any reason as to why that would be. 
the only thing that would immediately come to mind is luck, but you have to be some insanely lucky old woman to be able to just make it in a hag-infested forest by yourself. You seem to have some history with the hags. Do you mind telling us what you know of them? You're sharp. Really sharp. She uh, takes in a deep breath and sighs, or looks down at the ground. I do have a history with the hags. While she's talking, I want to see if there's any point where she feels dishonest or anything. Okay. Um, she takes a deep breath. <clears throat> I made a deal with the sisters when I was a, a young woman. Really not much more than a girl. And, like all deals with hags, there was a price. I thought I'd paid the price up front, but the price was steeper than that. Maybe it was interest. Maybe it was just the hags being vicious. But, in exchange for good fortune, a large and healthy family, prosperous times, I not only gave up one of my children, but... I also watched everything that I had done with my good fortune be taken away from me by the hags. I had three sons. They'd all married. And I had a, quite a large group of grandchildren as well. It seems the hags have found that it's, uh, there's as much cruelty in taking away everything as there is in leaving me to know that it's all my own fault. So I don't think the hags are going to visit here, except to maybe look through the windows and laugh. And I don't think they're going to be fool enough to uh, fall for a trick like what you guys are trying to pull. I still believe what we should do is find one of these families that's willing to give up a child. So we can cancel that or copy that child. And when we leave, they'll believe that we are trying to escort the child away. And that other child, the real child, can hide for a couple of weeks. That might work, but it'll be difficult to find a family that's willing to risk their precious children. I suggest another uh, means of getting to the hags. Can we make an insight check on that? Yeah, go ahead and give me a roll. Seems a little egged on. just bad character writing on my part. Um, yeah, no dishonesty uh, in her. Um, honest. Yeah, Jack's gonna lean forward in the, at that notion and be like, and what would that be? Before the hags um, gained power here and started spreading their influence throughout the forest, a dryad um, was the one responsible for uh, overseeing these woods. Our people made deals with her. It. It's a dryad. And in exchange, um, we respected the trees and were able to take what little we needed um, and didn't fear any uh, of the beasts of the forest. Since the hags have come and robbed the dryad of their influence, dark things have been able to multiply in the forest. Deals that we had made with the trees are no longer respected. And many of them have begun to watch and act as her eyes, as their eyes. I don't know if the Dryad is still alive. I would hope so. Um, but if it is, um, it'll be in the Sacred Grove. It's an old temple, or a shrine that was built um, to honor the Dryad, where the Dryad would meet with uh, any humans that wished to speak to the forest. Well, I'm sure the animals had their own needs of the Dryad, but I don't know if they ever went to the Sacred Grove to speak with the Dryad in person. Well, I think it's a good place to start. What do you think? Can you give us directions to the sacred sites? She nods. 
Also, you said earlier, and I'm sorry if I'm crying on a touchy subject, but that you made a deal with the hags, and it sounded like others have made a deal. Where do people go when they wish to make a deal with the hags? Perhaps it is in their roaming grounds. Help us pinpoint a location to the um, her face, uh, gets a bit dark at the mention of this, um, and she looks down at the ground, um, it's not really something that I'd like to speak about. What I did to contact the hags, uh, I called to them, they came to me. Don't think it's gonna work for a trick, but if you're a desperate woman, trying to get something you don't have, they're, uh, not that hard to find. Don't believe we have any desperate women here. Yes. Because if we did, they wouldn't be desperate anymore. Thank you, Jack. just shared the uh, link for the grove on uh, your map. That is quite the travel. Well, what, three days? Well, no, a day and a half. Yeah, day and a half. Well, how are we doing on rations, Roy? Sorry, one second. Well, your friend uh, checks your rations. Let's uh, see what goodies you brought from town. Any news? Any uh, anything new happening? Anybody get married in town recently? Well, recently being two or three months. I feel like we should remember this. Can we don't? <clears throat> it's a okay. very specific. Unfortunately, we know very little about the happenings of the town. Um, we were there shortly and agreed to help them with the hag issue. Um, and in our time there, it's seeing the children were being kept fed. Everyone is working hard. The blacksmith's wife is, or daughters come of age for marriage. I don't know. Nick still runs the trade store. Oh, and the elders were meeting. Basic stuff. But we know nothing specific since we were there for only a short time. Matilda smiles. Um, thank you. It's not much. But you're also new to these parts. Um, good to know that Katrina's still around. Her father's still ill? Yes, he still has that cough. Hmm. I'm waiting for that man to die any day. Been a while, though. Thank you for the news. I, uh, try to keep my, uh... That's why you want to know. What's happening in the village? No. Why do you want that man to die? And how he's doing? Oh. Apologies if I uh, phrased that poorly. He's been very sick for a very long time, and I, along with several others, expected him to die of that illness a long time ago. But he's outlasted not only his wife, who was otherwise healthy, um, but is possibly going to live long enough to see his daughter get married. Something none of us thought he would get. Okay. Can we convince you to go back to the village? I'm sure the people will feel ease at mine. 
that you were there safe? No, I, uh, I think they would mind. I'm better off where I'm at. Thank you, though. Um, Madame Vasha looks at her but doesn't want to pry. Um, if you guys want you to guys... round of insight checks, there may be something. Okay. I was going to say, Jack's going to kind of do the same thing and then share a glance with Vastra. Uh, oh, that's plus six. Yeah, Madam Vatsha, you detect some shame. Um, she's not being like, she's not lying, but she's not being 100% forthright, and there's some shame uh, in that. Yeah, mine was plus five as well. Jack, you same thing. Um, you're picking up on shame. Um, Madam Vostra looks, tries to make eye contact with her various teammates. What happens when she looks at uh, Jack? Uh, Jack, Jack will kind of like we're gonna share a knowing glance and. I'm gonna, I don't know, kind of like tilt my head a little bit. You shrug, you'd be like, eh, point, kind of like nudge towards her. May we ask why you can't go back? Um, she doesn't respond for a moment, keeps looking down at the floor. I deserve what I've earned. Staying out here in the woods, waiting to Jack, die. Jack's, Jack's gonna straight up, like, step forward and be like, what did you do to your family? What did you ask the hags for? She looks up to you with a bit of anger in her eye now. Um, I didn't do anything to my family. I... But the topics are related now. You wouldn't understand. Right, then, I made a hard... Then, then what did, did you ask the for? She looks like you a little bit of angrily. Help covering up a murder. And who did you murder? A monster. And a slut. Can we telepathically speak to her? Sure. Do I see any signs of deception? No. So I can speak with a person of that I can see within thirty feet of me. Um, equal to our charisma f modifier. I'm just gonna say, if you aren't comfortable sharing it with them, you can put it in this empty space of a brain of mine. And Timothy just looks like, kind of like the, the eyes shift to kind of my rotted eyes. When I kind of speak with her. Okay. Um, let's jump into DM talk time. Oh, shit. I'm okay. I've never done it myself. All right. You there? How long? Ow. Um... Matilda murdered her uh, first husband. Um, he uh, was abusive. She didn't like him. She, um, she had a child with him. Uh, and she got rid of both the child and him. Um, killed him. Then gave up her child to the hags. Uh, to secure a second murder. 
and to make sure that she got away with the first one. Uh, the second murder being the wife of the man that she really loved and really wanted to be with. Um, after uh, his wife died, uh, Matilda was able to successfully get his attention and enjoyed a nice bit of a life with the man that she wanted. Until eventually, the hags uh, decided to be extra ironic and cruel and monkey pawed the fuck out of her deal and um, basically scared off or tortured and ended up killing um, her entire family, pretty much. But left her completely alone. Um, and she thinks that the hags are also extending her life just as a cruel joke. We is going to, like, kind of envision, like, the gory becoming of herself, kind of, like, stitched up arts malware but also like gives her visions of the town the fields the scarecrow the people working just all the sights that the brain has absorbed and then also is going to mentally ask for a location where hags usually pop up like a location like Trying at some kind of like base just to feel a sense of like justice for her as a ragged torture. Her thoughts not being as used to telepathic communication are a little more open to you, and you sense um, uh, a bit of fear, um, a bit of loathing, a bit of pity when she sees, you know your conglomeration, but she also sense, you also sense a bit of gratitude when she shows you scenes of the village and the community um, that at one point in her life she was a part of. Um, unfortunately, she cannot uh, point you to any place specific to hags. Um, she showed you, or rather you saw the memory of her um, giving up her first child, uh, and she just walked into the woods. Um, and cried out for one of the hags while holding her child and turned around and one of them was there. Could I insightfully in her brain just picking at like this network of neurons firing off kind of sense a like chanting maybe like a smell you know like an atmosphere and a part of the woods that she walked into Oh, it's some kind like, of ritual um no, there wasn't any specific, anything specific to location. She just literally stepped out into the woods outside the village. That's fair. Yeah. Twee's gonna sever the link, but still, like, reaching out to, like, people that she saw, like, especially the blacksmith, the people at the merchant, maybe some of, the, like, the banquets, and being, like... Kind of alluring to a sense of familiarity to maybe get her to come back. She begins to cry, um, silently. And Twee is going to break concentration on Timothy and kind of just go limp. And kind of go inactive, because I've been kind of active for too long, so she's just going to go into her four-hour nap period. Okay. Here we are. Awesome. Um, is there anything else? Uh, I'm going to jump back into the main chat. We dramatically falls on the floor dead. Corpse. Dramatic. Blech. Madam Vostra raises an eyebrow. Am I kind of ground in the background? Huh? I kind of look peacefully asleep. Jack just looks at Twee and shakes his head. Twee, what happened? Um, as this happens, you notice that uh, Matilda is um, crying uh, quietly. Are you okay, Matilda? 
Um, she uh, uh, quietly says, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you, though. Um, help yourself to uh, anything you need, food or hot water or anything else. And she cries into Jack. a handkerchief. Jack Can I get goes up. something? Jack goes up and kneels in front of her and grabs her hand and says, Look, we don't want to hurt you. I'm sorry that this is obviously painful for you, but we're trying to help everybody. Um, she uh, sort of stops a, a little bit long enough to tell you, please go talk to your friend. They saw everything. I'm going to go get some firewood. And then she gets up um, and starts to shuffle out the door. Oh, that old lady's so dead. I'm going to follow the old lady out and offer my help to carry the wood. <laughs> but also because I... Somebody kicked me. Yeah, ja Please Jack's do. Click, kick the dead horse. <laughs> yeah, Jack's definitely going to go. Please. Please. Are you going to get up? Oh, that was... Could we say, like, it took her four hours to get the firewood and I just awaken when she comes back? <laughs> Leave them in suspense. Um, we can always just fast forward, like, to the next morning, yeah, unless you guys want to yeah, stay up Yeah, we can night. do that. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> ate. I hope we get the firewood. Jenny, since you're out there, Matilda makes you bring in more firewood as well. Um, oh, yeah, I'll drop it in the little thing right here. Uh, yeah, uh, so no, nothing else for the night? Everybody's settling in, piling in the bed with Matilda? Yeah, I think that's fine. I'm not going to sleep on the bed with Matilda. I'll sleep on the floor. There's some lovely rugs. Jeez. I'm sure will. Why will I sleep on the uh, She's cold blooded. The I want to be nice. Jack will sleep in the bed with her. That first chance she's gotten to spoon with somebody. Tweet in the middle of the night time. just randomly. <laughs> <laughs> just wakes up. <sighs> I'd be like, oh, that was a good sleep, guys. Um, well, the next morning, you hear uh, some birds chirping, um, and uh, you hear a rooster crowing as well. <laughs> okay. Where the fuck is that rooster? <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, you wake up. Um, uh, Jack, actually, if you want to know where the rooster is, uh, Matilda is probably happy to have you go collect the eggs so you guys can have like a hot breakfast. No, I'm going to fucking shoot it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> she has a heart attack. Madame Foster is following behind Jack with the crossbow. I'll work to get the fire going in the morning. <gasps> uh, Twee would like to telepathically bond with everyone before everyone, like, departs out and just show you these grisly images as you're doing the work. Just because. Are the images... What like images? Matilda's story? Matilda's story. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like we're going to have to do a quick summary. I can do a quick summary. If you'd like. Okay. I was... Yeah. If, if you weren't going to, I would do it as well. So. As you all are doing your chores of the morning, Matilda's cooking breakfast. Matilda's completely, you know, she has lifted a great burden off of her shoulders. She had, in so many words, conspired to kill her husband. And she offered up the child she, she that did she kill had him. with him, right? She did kill him. Right, right. She did kill. She, she did kill them. Um, both the child as well, right? Well, she gave the child to the hag. So. Right. She offered the child up to the hags. And then um, subsequently, she had to cover up for another murder to make that other murder happen. If I'm correct. Yeah, she, um, her first husband, she didn't like him. He was abusive, so she gave up uh, her child that she had with her first husband 
to the hags in exchange for uh, being able to get away with his murder. And then, yes. in order to be with a man that she truly wanted to be with, um, she had to get he rid of that man's life. life. Yeah, so she killed her husband and uh, her future husband's wife. And it was more of a monkey's paw in a way, where she's like having this long, happy, ex- not happy existence, a solemn, lonely existence out of petty because hags are evil. I mean. She doesn't know much on, like, where the hag's located, just that, like, she's more of, like, their plaything. So she's a bitch. Yeah, she's got a past. That's not rude, she's been through a lot. And she's an asshole, though, so, I mean, she kind of deserves it. <laughs> and I kind of, like, gave her images of, like, what I saw as, like, uh, you know, think of, like, insert commercial here of like a potato flew around my room kind of vibe but like around the village where it's like crows and farmland and it's fun she sweet ate smells. her own child to murder the father of that child to get away with another man you guys offered to like let her go back to the village like i sure i'm sure they're not but like i kind of like you know, sweeten the deal a bit, maybe think of, like, some kind of remorse so she can lay in bed and just pass away slowly. Mentally. I feel like if this is this, um, area's idea of justice, we should respect that. Absolutely. And, I mean, dramatic fall at the end. I was also in in an active period, just because that's what I have to do, four hour in an active period, A little bit of spice. I'm not judging. For an abusive man, it is hard to say one situation. You do not approve of murdering a wife to get a new man, but I'll not judge her on the first crime. But Jack, she's a bachelor, you can get it. There you go, Jack. She's a widow. First Katrina, now Matilda. Uh, so what is that? Hopping from the grave and the cradle. Yeah, no, Jack Jack was, like, potentially interested originally, and then hearing that, not nah, like, fuck that bitch. It's morning, right? We've had breakfast? Yeah. You, um, you and, uh, Jack came back with a whole chicken. A uh, rooster. Chicken. And some eggs. You won't have to be. You won't have to worry about waking up on this rooster's uh, clock anymore. She looks uh, confused um, and not all too happy, but she keeps her mouth shut. <laughs> When we return, we return looks to the at new Jack probably. Jeez. Yeah, Jack's just gonna be like, those damn birds. We is just gonna look confused and be like, we're strangers. We don't know custom. Oh, Where are we headed, you guys? <laughs> As you guys uh, turn to leave from the uh, little cabin, um, she thanks you for visiting. It was very nice to have met you, and... Perhaps we we're in, we can stop by. Yeah. Madame Vostro kind Provide of looks more awkward. We yeah, are going to silently gonna... walk out and like remove That's one of her arms and wave goodbye off and like give a semi-polite nod and walk out. She doesn't like stand on any ceremony and like wave at you guys until you're gone. She just says goodbye and then goes about her day. You can see her doing stuff inside and outside of her cabin as you look over your shoulder and walk away into the woods. So we leave the hand cart here. Rooster. 
We can come back through and pick it up. Or do you really want to be no. pushing your cart around? I I, I think we we take it still. Um. I believe Twee will probably still want to stay in character. I still think we should go without uh, somebody pretending and then copy a child. Twee, you, perhaps you can hide somewhere? Twee thinks about it, runs into the carriage and poofs into a... Um, um, a tiny, like... Think ten year old little girl. Well, we don't want a child. We want somebody who looks like they're a guard. Very well. I'm at like one level two slot. But that's okay. Twee transforms into a big like half orc woman with pigtails, brown hair, and sweet, like pink eyes. <laughs> Call me Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa. Shall we go? Oh. Kadesa, maybe you can push the car. Blow it. Performance check is good. I think I want to. While we're traveling, Jack's gonna just walk up and like smack Vanessa's ass and give give him a wink and then keep walking forward. And Vostra is going to ignore it but smile. He is going or Vanessa. Um Vanessa is Going to like, um, look like kind of like Patricia from you know, Yellow Sponge and be like, no, this is no, and like kind of repeat a couple of like gibberish, incoherent nonsense, trying to maintain focus. That was Right, we're going towards the place where the there's families with kids. And they... oh yeah, where are you going to? Um, you were you were told where the sacred grove was, um, but not where other families were. I guess we're going to the sacred grove. Yeah. Uh, you travel for uh, half a day, um, just about. Noon time. Um, if you made good travel time, um, wonderful. Would you like to split the shifts the same way? Let the boys get their rest for working with the cart. Sounds like a plan. Jack's not too spent. I I I can take uh I can take a shift. Twee can take the third shift and during like your first two watches I'll be in two shifts or three shifts, Tim? Yeah. Oh, you guys can do it in two shifts. 
Maybe you can do it next, or actually, I'll allow you to take my shift, I suppose. That's fine. Um, you guys are able to travel for a full day, no issues. Um, and, uh, yeah, you go to sleep. Um, no issues overnight, though it is a very creepy atmosphere. Um, and, uh, more than once, the uh, people on guard think that there is something in the woods that isn't actually there. Interesting. But you managed to make it. Can fun. I, while I'm keeping watch, can I see if I sense the same sure. sort of magical presence that was around Matilda's house during one of those little episodes? And can um, I, as a sorceress, kind of like investigate Arcana? Let Demi do. Let Demi do. Yeah, go ahead and uh, give me the roll, um, Jenny. Oh, six. Um, so that you can sense the same magical presence. Um, this time there's a couple of large gnarly trees nearby, um, just to the left of the f of the road. Uh, it seems to be coming from them more than from anywhere else. Thank you. That I'm not a druid. I'll tell Twee about the trees when we switch shifts. Um, but otherwise, I'll wait till the morning to discuss it with the party. That's good. He's going to sniff the whatever color the atmosphere tends to be. Um, and I had a sense of smell. This would smell interesting. Uh, do you guys continue on traveling the next day? Yeah, I'll have the party know that uh, the two trees by where we were camp had a strong magical presence. Um, last night, I don't know if that's similar to... Um, the druids, maybe? I mean, the dryads. Maybe that's connected to what you were saying about eyes and ears in the first, but... Do you think we'll have to put another person on watch? I think it's sort of... They're watching us, and now we know. We can watch them. They haven't done anything hostile yet. Okay. Let's uh, see how far we make it today. You're able to travel? Yeah, uh, Jack's done for the plan. He's just on kind of like a high alert, keeping, keeping an eye out. Um, after a half day's travel, uh, you start to get close, um, and you're able to see a few hundred yards up ahead through the trees um, some uh, right angles and straight lines. And as you get closer, you realize you have approached the... The Sacred Grove. Can you guys see all your tokens and manipulate them? Oh, yes. So yeah, the um, Sacred Grove is a uh, very nice looking place, um, as opposed to all the other parts of the forest. This part looks healthy, doesn't look dark and demonic. Uh, within the walls of the grove itself, all the trees um, are a healthy green, flowers are blooming. You can see butterflies and wildlife that you haven't seen um, before. You've seen lots of squirrels, lots of skinny, dark squirrels, but here you see lots of uh, songbirds. Um, and healthy chestnut squirrels. Um, the walls are old, though. Um, much of the carving in them is faded, and in places the walls have broken away. And on a dais in the middle of the grove, 
is a very thin, gnarled, um, gray-looking dryad. That looks at her in relation. That is just to speak for our party. As you uh, walk um, closer to the dais, um, the druid um, walks up to the top of the steps and looks down. Visitors, it's been a long time. Do you come seeking a pact? What sort of pact do you offer? Today, not much. Yesterday, I could have offered free pass, safe passage through the woods, a bountiful harvest, successful hunt. But now I can offer very little outside of these walls. What has caused your loss of power? The Night Hag sisters and the matron of the coven, Anise. Their influence is greater than my own. The trees no longer listen to me, and many of them have turned their hearts against me completely and seek to destroy that which walks. Do you know where this Night Hag is? The Night Hag sisters. Yes, I know where their lair is, and I can okay. tell you of a back entrance to it. The roots okay, of God. the trees that I still speak to go deep and deliver me many secrets of the forest. And what would be the cost for this information? You may end up paying a cost with your lives, but the information itself is free. What lives? What you seek to do in destroying the hags is not an easy thing. They are old and wicked, and many of the trees listen to them, and more will act as their eyes and ears. You will not be able to sneak up on them. They will know you are coming, and they are prepared. How prepared? A hag in its lair is always prepared to do violence and enact cruelty. That's fair. Is there any other way to draw them out? Maybe not fight them in their lair? Maybe, but I cannot think of one. Perhaps an attempt to strike a bargain would lure them out. The sisters are night hags. Bargains are their bread and butter. Many a deal they have struck with devils and even arch devils in exchange for souls. Souls that the hags have in plenty. I don't suppose anybody's willing to put their soul on the line. Who hasn't already? He raises her hand. You would risk your souls to destroy these hags. Please don't like look concerned when she said souls. 
but like shrugs. It's not to destroy the house. It is to help the village. And that is a noble cause we're fighting for. And in helping the village, we may even help this forest. If it is to return to the splendor that we can see around us in this world. I would agree. Tell me, do you truly think you are capable of destroying the night hags? Yes. I believe so. They've traveled all this way. Uh, then I would offer you this. I am very much coveted by the night hags. My presence, my continued existence, my defiance of them is an insult. I am free from their torments. And they cannot haunt me here. And because of that, they hate me. Were you to offer them me, you could draw them here. Away from their lair. And what would happen if they were to get you? I would, what would be, be the result. This grove would die as I would, but without the hag's influence, the trees would be able to go back to the way they were. Wild, true. But with time, a new spirit would be born, and a new dryad would occupy this place. It sounds to me like you've really thought this through. Everyone, what do you think? I like the sound of that. Twee's gonna whip her hair around and be like, I'm the only wretched, decrepit girl around here. But all possible, I'd like to spare your life. The forest will need guidance. And the villagers' protection as they try to regrow. We cannot allow him to be taken. Yeah. We must kill whichever or both of the hags if they show. The Dryad uh, is silent and looks at you all for a moment, and then reaches up with one arm, grabs its left arm just above the under uh, armpit, and pulls it off. The arm sort of freezes into place like a dick that looks like a hand. And uh, the Dryad offers it to Vastra. This as proof of my submission to you. You might use it as the, to prove to the hags that I am vulnerable. Twee is going to telepathically speak to Vastra, Dryad Jerky. Uh, I think it's time uh, to go ahead. going to respond with a stiff no to Twee. We can't have this. Thank you. I want, how I might we suppose send this is the, the best way to contact them. Shall we... Telepathically, try. Looking at Twee. Twee, are you able to? I could try. You can call to them with your voices. Simply step outside of this grove, and they will hear you. Jack, you're a greater performer than I. Would any of you like to accompany me while I reach out to them? Oh. I feel as if I might be caught unprepared if I'm met by myself. Before you do, think you need a to break the plan how you can get them that that guard this grove. You will need to destroy the entrance that you came through, the two columns on either side. Who's got this one? Jenny, you're good with projectiles. Yeah, but a bow and arrow against the column is sort of... Ow, ooh.
Does anyone have an axe or a hammer? I can probably break them down. Also, wait, before we do that. When you call to them, what is your, like, we have to still convince them that we're submitting to them. And they've been watching us, and they know what we've been trying. I was going to show them the leg as proof. To tell them that we have made him submit, and we wish to ransom his uh, obedience. For information on the monster, yes? That's good bait. And I'll be ready to destroy the columns when you invite them inside to meet this crippled dryad. Unfortunately. What are the names of the what is the name of one night hag? The one who will respond quickest? They are both called sister. Oh good. Okay. So me, Jack, and Roy? I guess I'll shoot at the column. Um... Rather than getting into the uh, hag fight tonight, um, so. do you guys want to save that for next session and call it here? Yeah, that yeah, sounds like a good time. All right, cool. Because I also... Well, it wouldn't be hard to set up the hag fight here. I actually didn't fully expect us to have the hag fight here. Yeah, this seems interesting. I wasn't expecting this. I was trying to get you guys to go to the lair. Um, well, let's see what happens. But that was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you guys uh, poked enough to find Matilda's story. Yeah, it's messed up. Yeah, I wanted to create someone who was kind of like a... I wanted to make a little bit of a complex character. Mixed bag. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, cut off the stream here.